Hello friends and dino fans, I have something for you this episode that has been missing from the last two, which is dinosaurs. And with that, I welcome you to Hogwarts Park. And this is the second part of the last episode where I did the Slytherin outskirts. Today, I'm doing the Gryffindor outskirts, which includes Hagrid's hut and a teeny tiny little habitat for a dinosaur. Uh, maybe not the most <laughs> fancy dinosaur you crash could wish for. <laughs> it's the Deinonychus and it's a giant purple toad. A little den that I'm going to like include into the black lake, the dark, the big lake, the black lake, the great lake, whatever its name is. It's one of those. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, right now I'm doing path. I'm repeating the pattern that I used on the other side. And I, um, yeah, basically it just didn't want to reinvent the, the wheel and thought let's just, you know, it's basically the mirror image of what I did last time. So let's just decorate it like somewhat similar went over there to check uh, how many of those loops I made there because I'm doing the same amount here and I'm adding like a little connection down to the Gryffindors checking how I did it on the other side I just sort of wanted to lay down the path foundation for what I had planned here and to have it similar to the Slytherin outskirts situation so I could get started with Hagrid's hut, which is what I'm doing now. I just went straight for it because I knew this is the perfect place for Hagrid's hut. And now I'm placing like the little bathroom, the JP bathroom and a Malta restroom. I think they're both bathrooms. Uh, one is the hut, one is like the workshop. I'm going to rename them and call them uh, first I called them Hagrid's Hut, like literally, but then I renamed them to Caretaker's Hut and Caretaker's Workshop. There you go. <laughs> um, but I decided to call the flu powder station that I'm going to add later uh, Hagrid's Hut. So uh, this is like a historic site of the famous caretaker Hagrid and the memorial to his services to whatever the school the park um are commemorated by giving the station his name because this used to be his hut or is his hut and will forever be celebrated for being his hut uh yeah okay so uh, i'm adding like garden things around it um which is pretty straightforward i'm going to uh, start soon, I guess, with the little pumpkin patch. And you know me, I'm going to use the cacti, the round ones, to uh, uh, pretend those are green, not ripe um, pumpkins. Now I'm adding this little th uh, protection tent-like structure to those potted plants there. All kinds of stuff to make it look lived in and as if someone is actually um doing things there uh so while i do this let me just say thanks guys thank you so much for all the nice comments i got last time um really i i know i okay right now i'm a lot in my head and things like this like the th stuff i talked about it's just keeping me from doing videos you know what i mean because i'm in my head too much and i'm thinking too much and wondering too much and asking myself too many questions and uh, yeah that leads to me just not doing videos as much as i did like before whenever before was <laughs> so yeah oh yeah we have a situation with the feeder our dragons are getting stuck on the feeder uh, I exchanged them. They had goat feeders. I exchanged them all for meat feeders because the goats in some of them, um, they started to disappear and um, leading to starving dragons, which wasn't ideal. But now 
they're getting stuck on the feeder and starving because of that. So <laughs> the situation hasn't, uh, I don't know, I, I need to... I need to figure out how to exactly take care of my dragons, but that's a story for another time. Now I'm starting with the lining, with the little rock lining of the pumpkin patch. And uh, as always, you know, I like doing this using my rocks, the temperate, what is it? Temperate rocks, yes. With random rotation turned off to do like a little rustic lining of path. Uh, I think it fits pretty well with like this little gardening situation and now I'm adding these stones, uh, flat stones as a little walk walking path through the cabbage patch. Nice. Now I'm going to add the cabbages and uh, was I done with the, no, yeah, you know what? I'm done with what I, uh, what I said before. I don't want to again start to go into a, a rambling about stuff that doesn't have anything to do with Jurassic World Evolution 2 or this park. So there we go. I just wanted to say thank you, you guys. I appreciate it. Um, that's why I love you so much. Oh my god. I'm getting... <laughs> well, it's the truth. What can I say? Thank you for the comments. Thanks for everyone. I, f in case you're new here, I knew like I know Evo is like and thank you, Evo. It keeps sending people my way. I don't know. It's it's crazy these days. And um, if you're here and you decided to stay, thank you so much and welcome, welcome to this channel. And I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, there you go. I'm adding plants that. Uh, I know we don't have anything that looks like a pumpkin plant. Uh, so I use the tropical thing because it has the big leaves. And it's the most uh, somewhat close to what a pumpkin uh, plant would look like. So, but uh, I couldn't fit them in. So I use the teeny tiny ones and it's magical pumpkins, right? So maybe they have different leaves um, trying to hide the pots of those behind um, the pumpkins or the rocks. And just to make it look green, this is the pumpkin patch. It's done. Wonderful. I'm just adding clutter, uh, all sorts of stuff because have, you know, caretakers, they need a workshop, they need something to do repairs on something. Uh, wow. <laughs> Use the word something as often as you can, Miri. <laughs> so yeah, I'm adding these Malta uh, little uh, whatever they are, because it looks like some sort of outdoor workshop, you know, with it's rustic it's been lived in it's not new it has been there for a while this is a generation of caretakers who have generations of caretakers have made use of this property uh, <laughs> that's how it looks so uh, that's what i'm doing so i'm adding like all sorts of teeny tiny little planters and greeblies and um, all kinds of stuff i added the um, the umbrella it's not the umbrella the sun shade umbrella what's it called a parasol <laughs> i added the parasol of course because hagrid has has his wand in an umbrella uh, hide disguised as an umbrella now i'm adding these planters just to pretend those are like pla actual real planters where um, the caretaker Hagrid is growing something. I gave him like the teeny tiniest light we have, um, turned it off and just put it in front of the door to pretend that this is like his little lantern, his lamp that he uses to go into the dark, uh, into the forbidden forest at night. And uh, now I'm just trying to hide the concrete base of these wooden, wooden planters to make it look more less um you know less professional <laughs> yeah it doesn't i don't want them to have this concrete base uh it's just you know like 
I don't pour uh, a foundation of concrete into on my balcony, my terrace, or into any sort of garden situation before I put a planter there. There, so that's the reason. I'm just, you know, doing my thing with the rocks. And um, yeah, that's uh, Hagrid's hut lining the path, adding flowers, lots of lovely things, embedding it in a bit of forest. And there we go. This is basically Hagrid's hut done. Uh, I know it's not like it doesn't look like the one from the movies or I think there's two two from the movies. There are, are two versions. And we had an orthosaurus. That happens to me sometimes. It gets stuck while trying to do a social animation or trying to get get on a rock platform so I have to reload into the game so it doesn't die. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's what I did. Bringing in the vegetation to really have the, the hut feel like it's nestled into the forest. And um, we know that Hagrid goes into the forest regularly and he's not far from the forbidden forest that we built so far. So, you know, uh, kind of makes sense. Here's the Northosaurus. Uh, I had to watch it hunt because it failed quite a lot. And I was like, are you going to die? Are you not? It survived. Thank God. So, <laughs> yeah, but these are the, the little things that ha keep happening in this park. So, you know, sharing. I'm sharing it with you because sharing is caring. Uh, okay, let's keep going. So um, vegetation, as you know. Right, uh, right there, uh, right on the right. Oh my God. Okay, let me just, um, I'm going to add, what am I going to add now? Oh, a little light. Some lights there. This is the lantern that I was talking about that I turned off. And of course, we need more planters, tables and chairs for, you know, to sit down if you have guests underneath this lovely malta tree i'm adding a teeny tiny little tree there as well because it looks it yeah it looks nicer if there's some greenery there and not as rustic and utilitarian and um, there you go this is the hut beautiful i like it with the little garden. I really like the little pumpkin patch. I think the planters do very well, this little workshop. I, you know, it really looks like someone could be living and working here. I, I don't know what you think about it. Leave it in the comments if you like it. And um, this is the overview. And now what I did is to add like basically like, okay, those are many likes and basically's. I added an amenity here like I did on the other side it has like the same position and this one is getting a huge terrace you go I'm um, laying the foundation with the path right now there you go this is the terrace and it's going to have a lovely look onto the black lake onto the great lake and right opposite, like underneath, this is the flu stage, powder station that I was talking about, which is going to be called Hagrid's Hut. There you go. Adding the lights to indicate that this is the flu powder thing, turning them green, as I do. Um, lots of path things. So uh, right below the terrace for the amenities that I uh, just established with the path, is going to be the giant purple toad habitat. I know we already have those in the park um, leading up to the owlery, but I, you know, there's a lot more, ironically, dinosaurs than magical creatures in this game. And um, so I'm, I have to repeat some, and this is just what I wanted to do for like these outskirt paths, you know, include uh, teeny tiny habitats lining the path or not lining the path, but close to the path that have these 
um, yeah, magical creatures that you get to see in Hogwarts Legacy in the like in the wild, which are giant purple toads, thestrals, um, what else, dug bogs, and all of that stuff, you know. So um, I'm going to repeat those species uh, over the course of this park build a couple of times, and here I felt like adding the giant purple toad. Something nice, something that is not going to attack you. <laughs> so no dog bogs, but giant purple toads. They're happy, they're friendly, and even though it's the Deinonychus, um, they don't, like, they're not going to eat you. But uh, <laughs> there you go. So I'm struggling with my Malta walls just to find a pattern of, like, you know, um, separating the terrace from the path, but having like exits and entrances to it, I decided on this very simple solution. And this whole decoration process is pretty straightforward. I added like a planter um, to separate like the several little seating arrangements I took later. And um, just decorating so you know what i guess today i'll just shut up for a moment and let you watch this with some lovely hogwarts legacy music playing in the background and get back to you once i have something to say again <laughs> so enjoy and talk to you soon
Right, here we go. We have about five minutes left or six. I'm back to talk to you. I'm looking around to see uh, what I did on the other side to create this little very simple path separation. Um, you saw me decorate the little giant purple toad habitat for our Deinonychus. Um, I'm decorating, I decorated these circles of camera because I decorated them the same way as I did in the Slytherin outskirts thingy bee thing thingy thing that I built in the last episode. So um, this is the result. It's the same like pattern of objects. I just chose different planters because the Slytherins have more green and um, less uh, purple. <laughs> Although purple is probably more of a Ravenclaw color, but um, there's only so much you can do for the Gryffindors. We don't have red f flowers except for the um, the tropical one, and it gets boring if I use it all the time. So um, need to bring in some uh, diversity of foliage. Okay, and. Um, so what what is left to, for me to say probably um oh i could talk i could talk uh some organizational stuff because you guys have been asking me about live streams um a lot and uh i have to like i have a sad sad announcement i can't make one i i can't just make it happen uh, right now i think the earliest date for me to do one is uh what would it be like the 8th 8th december because the weekends before that i'm booked <laughs> so um just so you know also something that i should address is that um maybe this maybe I am right now in this moment deciding that Lagoon Park is not going to be finished. Um, I can I like I can't. It's it's so big. I have done all this path pattern, and I kind of like I don't know. I'm torn on it. So maybe you guys would like to chip in if we should. Maybe. Lagoon Park is something we do in streams um, and not like just a stream park. That could be okay for me because now I've done this path pattern and I look at the park and I see, I see like the vision appears and I see it finished and it's the most tedious thought to do all the stuff that needs to be done. So it actually gets to the point that I see in my head and before my inner eye. So <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I have no motivation of doing that right now. But if you guys insist on, uh, guys and gals, by the way, um, <laughs> sorry, friends and foes, if you insist on me uh, finishing this park build, uh, well, then put it in the comments. Uh, if you're still here, by the way, um, if not, then, uh, yeah, well, you don't have a say in it anyway. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, here we go. I'm doing final touches, um, adding like a little picnic area here. I'm going to add off camera again 
two amenities right behind these two zip lines. Um, but I didn't, I didn't film it because, uh, or record it because I just customized them and did nothing uh, to uh, around them, just forest and rocks. So um, yeah, there we go. Now I'm placing like the last bits of wall, um, the last planters that need to be put there so we can say this this area is finished doesn't have to be touched anymore it's done completely um, and again I tried to use uh, make it look detailed without using too much stuff so you know because of the frame rate but I have good news I went back into the park and I adjusted my graphic settings it's still laggy sometimes as you can see in this glamour shot um you know but i got to like 105 frames per second um which i guess is good news it this won't solve the crashing problem that i have this won't so solve the dinosaurs not uh, like the bugging out uh problem that we have here but i think this means that this is definitely not the end of hogwarts so um, I hope you're <laughs> excited that it's going to continue because I am. I want to finish this park. If I do nothing but finish this park, then um, I shall be happy for the rest of my life, whatever. Okay, so um, here we go. This is Hagrid's hat. I like it a lot. I hope you like it too. Nice little corners here and there. Not too much, but just enough to make it look detailed like so you get the feeling that this has been worked on there's a lot of giant purple toads with again i had to add fireflies i just love this how this looks if you don't get too close of course at night and uh, during the dawn and um night whatever okay so here we go this is it i thank you so much for watching stay tuned stay inspired and uh, see you next time Bye bye